In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you that you are with us today. Fill our hearts with joy. Fill our classroom with peace. Fill our school with love for one another. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our last lesson, we began to look at parables. And we looked in particular at the parable of the lost, the lost coin. Now we didn't explain it much, but we, we learned the, the story and you've written it down in your own words. Okay, so what are these? They're all parables, all right? The parable of the sower, the parable of the lost sheep, the good Samaritan, the prodigal or lost son, the lost coin, which is the one we've, we've just been looking at, this one here. You can see the lady there looking for the coin. She's searching everywhere. The mustard seed, the talents, and the sheep and the goats. These are eight of the parables, but there are many more. Right, I need you to get ready to write. If you're at home, go. you can pause the video and go and get your book. If you don't have your book, you can use paper. This is a back of the book exercise. This is our first back of the book quiz that we're going to do. Now in a back of the book quiz, it's a little bit like the, the shouting out quick quiz, except we write the answers down. It's okay if you get them wrong, absolutely fine. And it's, you know, it's not a final piece of work and, and I won't look at them, but you do them at the back of your book. And the, the, this is kind of the next step from the quick quiz mode in that you, you do write them down. Uh, one word answers are fine for this and you don't have to write out the question. Just write the short date, turn to the back of the book, do the short date, a bit like you if you were doing a spelling test or something and write number one and then write the answer. Some of the questions might need a, a longer answer so make sure you leave, you leave room but one, one word answer is fine. Don't copy out the question. Okay, it's quick. You have three minutes to answer all of the questions. There is a timer on the screen. At the end of the time, a big stop sign will come up and then we'll talk about the answers. So whether, whether you're at home or, or at school doing this, you have uh, three minutes and try to, try to be as honest as you can. Obviously, I can't check if you're cheating, but you, you're only cheating yourself if you do. Now, the first four or five questions I've made sure are questions that, that we have covered now a lot. So I expect those to be correct. The, the final four or so, final four or five, are more recent learning. So things I would expect you maybe to struggle with, but that you should be able to get. The very last question in a quick quiz will always be one that, that is harder, okay? That maybe I haven't taught you or we haven't practiced much. So this is the one that's a real stretch. It's like a bonus one. If you get that one right, good for you. Um, but as, as, as with usual with, with quick quizzes, whether it's in your book or shouting out, you don't worry about it. I'm not going to find out the answer. This is a learning quiz. And they're, they're really effective ways of consolidating your learning. And most importantly, they're a way of you seeing what gaps you have in your learning. Okay, so you've got three minutes starting now.
Okay, stop there. We're going to look at the answers now. Tick the correct answers, cross out any incorrect answers or obviously missing answers. You don't have to write out ones you've got wrong um, because you haven't got the question, so it'd be useless just cross out ones you've done wrong. But you need to think carefully, and that's the point of this exercise. Which ones did you get wrong? So you can, you can look back at the questions, uh, or you can look at the questions in a minute. And which did you get wrong and why? Is there a pattern? Is it ones about a particular topic that you don't know about yet? Is it ones to do with language that you don't know? What is it? Is it a memory thing? What's going on? You need to investigate your own thinking. You need to dig, 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 dig. Why did I not get that one right? Why did I not know that yet? It might simply be because Mr. Walton hasn't taught it to you yet. That's okay. And, and that's it. But if it's the, ah, I should have known that. I did know that, but I couldn't get that information. Then you need to think about what you are going to do to make it easier to remember next time. Okay, so we'll have a look now. Number one, St. Peter. Number two, St. Matthew. Number three, student. If you wrote follower, that's fine, but it does literally mean student. Number four, the answer is 12 or 13, depending on whether or not you count Judas. So yes, Jesus at any one time had 12 apostles, 12 special disciples that he sent out to be the first bishops, but Judas betrayed Jesus. He was a traitor and he didn't say sorry and he was replaced by Matthias. So you could argue that there are 13 apostles. Which apostle betrayed Jesus? Judas Iscariot. Number six, a poor woman. Number seven, to be sorry. Not just to say sorry, but to truly be sorry, to be sorry. Finish this quote. I tell you there is joy like this in the presence of the angels over one sinner repenting or one repentant sinner, something like that. Name three parables. So there's, there's a whole list. There's, you know, more than 30 parables. Um, and I don't expect you really to remember many at all by now other than the lost coin but if you could remember three well done and there are a, a bunch here lost coin lost sheep mustard seed sheep and goats talents lost or prodigal son good samaritan parable of the sower and so on so if you got three well done now number 10 is named three more and, and that would amaze me if you managed to remember six altogether that's great um, perhaps you chose one that's not on this list that's fine you can you can go and check that for yourself so there we go we're going to do some quizzes like this every so often so now you're used to the routine of it. All right, we'll do a little bit more, more work, and then that will be it for today. Jesus was a great storyteller. As far as we know, Jesus never wrote any of his stories down. So who did? And we're going to look at this as an A-style question. Who wrote Jesus' stories down? So it's a dead simple answer. Jesus' stories were written by... You have to think about that. You come up with an answer, come up with a nice full sentence answer. You don't need to write it down, but, but come up with your own answer for that, please. And I will check with you next lesson. Parables are simple. Parables are memorable. That's related, isn't it, to the word memory. Remember, they are easy to remember. But they have deep themes. Judgment, forgiveness, the kingdom of God, love, the sacraments, and justice, and many more. Now, the, par the parable we've looked at has something to do with forgiveness and the kingdom of God, the lost coin. Because it said at the end, didn't it? What did it say? It was the answer to one of our questions. It said, I could get the, uh, where is it? Here it is, okay. I tell you there is joy like this in the presence of the angels, that means in heaven, over one sinner repenting. What does repent mean? To be sorry. So it's about asking for forgiveness and being forgiven by God. And God is so, Catholics believe that God is overjoyed, overjoyed when somebody who's done something wrong is truly, truly sorry. So overjoyed, overjoyed, just like a poor woman with hardly any money. 
and she's desperate for the money. Oh, oh goodness me, she's lost, she's lost her money. She's lost some of the money and she searches and searches and searches. And that is like, that is like God looking for us when we are lost. Lost being a metaphor for sinning. Sinning being when you turn away from God and do something wrong. Okay. Judgment, forgiveness, the kingdom of God, love, and the sacraments, justice. There's some of the themes. Quick quiz. Parable of the sower. Who painted the parable of the sower? This is a very famous painter. This is Van Gogh. Which parable might this be? Parable of the lost sheep. Now, the parable of the lost sheep is very similar to the parable of the lost coin, but not quite the same. So you can start thinking, start, start uh, guessing what, what the story might be. Two men on a horse, one doesn't look so good. This is the parable of the good Samaritan field going on here there's some details that might distract you don't worry about the tree don't worry about the house but there's two people in the foreground one is lying down doesn't look so well one of them sort of bent over near him in green this chap so this is the parable of the good samaritan again and you should know what this is there's our old woman looking for her coin actually it doesn't say old woman it just says woman poor woman looking for her lost Coin. Okay, we'll stop there for today.